Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to Painting Watercolours with me, Colin. And I'm going to do this one, it's going to be a yellow sunset one in say the Mr. Winter. I'll give you a quick rundown of the colours that I am using. Nickel, Titanium Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Light, Indian Yellow, Light Red, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, a little of the sepia and French ultramarine and I'm going to drop some bit of nickel yellow in here just to create something a little bit bright and bring it into the mountain don't worry about it then I want to take some of the cadmium yellow light powerful color and bring that in as well don't bother about covering the hills up it doesn't matter it'll I'm going to backlight them so it will be helpful I'm just going to drop some raw sienna into that. We will be glazing over this with the Indian yellow, which will deepen the sky colour. And I'm actually going to drop some of the Indian yellow in, just to start to create the depth that I might want in it. Always leaving some of the other colours to show through. Maybe a little bright on here. the hills and into this just might drop a little light red in all this will show through I hope now I've tried off the river area because I'm going to paint that in last I'm going to take some of the cadmium yellow just run it along the shoreline sweep some of it back this is a mucky mark from using the wrong rubber not all rubbers are the same I think we might cover that up with a bush now this is just a suggested colour palette, so you can use your own, by all means I encourage it. And just to darken some of that snow area off, maybe just a little raw sienna. slightly with the burnt umber and a touch of the French ultramarine or well, have it like that just drop a little in the sky light red and this I don't mind it spreading it's just adding movement just creating some differences this just to dry slightly okay that's about five minutes the paper's still quite wet but I just wanted to show you this pick a flat brush and tuck it under the edge of your paper and run it round the edge of the paper and the board and you just mop up any excess paint and this will help to stop run backs on your paintings I'll take a flat brush we'll see how we go with this and I've wet the brush but I'm now drying it basically completely out and into this I'm just going to load some paint on the tips I want to bring some clouds across you want to bring it into the light area you see how it's spreading nicely but not too far just create some interesting clouds and you can use the tip the flat of the brush and you've got no water on the brush you're not adding water to the paper you're adding paint far simpler I'm going to just deepen that slightly that's light red French ultramarine and some burnt umber let's see if that's a little darker tone yes it is Just make it interesting in your sky. Then I'm going to 
it's a darkening once again, just another tone down with some French ultramarine, and maybe just touching some darker tones. Really, that's all I want to do to that. And now I'm going to let that completely dry. Right, the sky is dry, very dry, and all that does is it allows the paint to fix harder to the paper and allows you to glaze over it. Some of the paper, some of the paint may get dislodged, but it doesn't really matter on this. But I want to keep the brightness of the sky in the middle here. And because I don't want any hard edges, I'm going to use water and from the center out and pull towards the edges. gentle light strokes trying not to disturb the paint underneath just in the sky and I'm going to take some of the Indian yellow and I'm going to judge the strength of this in the corner I'm going to pull it gently down towards the bright area and pull it into the painting you see how that is lying on top of the clouds and deepening the sky. You'll have lots of time to do this. Starting from the edge and pulling in. Start from the edge and pull in. Just like to say a big thank you to all the viewers who leave comments. I read every one. And this glazing like this, there's two things. It softens the sky underneath the clouds and deepens it. Remember it will dry lighter. Leave it to dry naturally. And you should end up with no hard edges. Okay, that's nice and dry. I've just taken some clean water and I'm just re-wetting the whole of this background mountain. You could put some detail into this, but for this I don't want to. I want to be, make it relatively simple. So I'm going to take some more of the light red and add it to that. And I want to deepen it with some French ultramarine. And I don't mind it mixing with the rest. But I don't want this to be too strong. take some water to that and I'm just going to touch that in just allow this to drift very faintly very faint once it's stronger in some areas than the other and as it drifts over the colour it should show through I do want some of the colour to come across here to pull it down just keep feeding it in actually lose this edge here just to allow it to disappear slightly and allowing a lot of the colour to show through you won't see this here so I can just wipe that out now, taking a little bit more French Lost Marine just give this a little bit of shadow. Not too much. I say I don't want this to be too strong, but I do want to give a little bit of shadow in the sides. Excess water. Off to the bottom. And 
then let that dry. Now that the mountain has dried, you can see how it's backlit and the sun is shining through here and you can see the colours underneath. It gives it a lot of interest in a very simple form. I'm just re-wetting this left hand side hill. Some blue and add it into here with some red. And what I want to do is just want to drop some trees into this. I don't want these too strong even, that's probably a little strong. Take some paint off. Just give the indication of some background evergreens. Just using the tip of the brush. Just an indication there may be some highland trees on it. You won't see it behind these trees here. And I'm just gently brushing this down. I've just re-wet this right hand hill. That's just a bit of light red. Sepia this time, a little bit dark as you come closer. And as you come forward and as your painting sections are drying, you can see how you can bring your painting forward a little bit in the, the tone. Bit of light red into this just to warm everything up on this hillside. And I'm going to take a little bit more blue into that. And once again, I'm just going to start to indicate some closer evergreen trees. Take a little burnt umber and French ultramarine, just darken it with that. Then I'm going to take a mop brush and I just want to begin to put the foliage on these. So I'm just attaching these to the ground. Once again, just put the tops in, don't make them all the same height. Once again, the mop brush. Take some of the raw sienna. I want to put some of these bushes in, not too much on the brush. This is kind of the background called to them. I want to let each individual layer of this dry so we can put another layer in over the top and leaving some of the underlying colour to show through. I've just put a little bit of thicker, stronger light red. The other one's a little bit too weak. I'm just going to put this on as we're slowly getting darker. Once again, I'm just using the very tips of the brush for this. Bushes. You may have to let this dry in between applying it. Just 
a really dark one. Pencil to rain in sepia. some branches through and trunks, some structure. Take some clean water and just run it once again. Just running this into the, the bottom, just for a nice bit of dark. some down the bank into some shadow just running some water along the edge strong Indian yellow areas just soften them in some of the darker mixture just along the shoreline just pull that back as well it's just adding shadows and outlines like I say sometimes it's best not to think about it sometimes just do it kind of thing that just helps outline the river and before we put the river in I don't want it to run into the river just yet so we're going to let that dry I just put a little bush there where the rubber mark was just to hide it you can do that you didn't miss much and I'm just going to put the river in now and I've re wet the river area and I'm just going to begin to put some colour into it. So I'm going to use the nickel yellow. It's in this, every, all the colours in the sky really. Put some of the cadmium yellow and brushing it into horizontal strokes. All nice and wet. Some of the Indian yellow can go quite strong with this now. Very gently bring the colours together. Just take some dark mixture, French ultramarine and burnt umber, and I'm just going to drop it in along where the shoreline is and just allow it to drift. Oh, yeah, I'm going to just put a couple of birds in the sky. Just making for a reflection. Really do much more to this. Put a little dark area in here. 
it up like a little deeper pool just helps to break that yellow up a little bit Make it a little easier Let's take a little dark mixture <clears throat> allow this to dry then I'm going to sign it put some out around it and frame it I hope you've enjoyed this one if you have please click the like button and subscribe I'll leave some suggestions at the end of this video for other videos I've made for YouTube and I will see you next time Thank you very much for watching.